Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, uh, something that I haven't done yet on this YouTube channel. Instead of going over uh, an actual power aerial today, I'm going to be going over a specific concept in battle song flipping in the context of power aerials. So it's something that I think people have, like, people already have some familiarity with uh in flipping in general but in the context of power aerials there's some specific stuff that i don't think is as common knowledge and it's going to help people uh actually tie together the different tricks that i've gone over so far so what i'm going to be talking about today is flow and uh this is a i think a really important thing to talk about when it comes to power aerials because people are used to doing like uh, like most of the time when I see power aerials, I'll see somebody do a big throw and then they catch it and then there's like a weird like refractory period, you know, where they have to like recover from that cat that big catch. And I think um, something that people kind of like about my style is that I don't usually do that. And there's a lot of different ways that I've kind of talked about how to manage um, the catch and like the throw and everything so that you can recover a lot faster and make it smoother. But now I'm going to talk about how I really do it in concepts, it, not just in the mechanics that I've gone over. All right, so the first thing that I would want to go over is basically what I would say flow is. And so I'd say flow is uh, essentially just conserving the momentum or at least creating the illusion that you're conserving the momentum of the battle song while you're flipping. And so in uh, you know regular flipping, it's something like uh, doing a helix into behind the eight ball or something like that. Um, and then in power aerials, that kind of translates to like doing a halo into a chimera. And so the first thing to note about that definition of flow that I just gave is that you don't really like literally have to maintain the momentum of the battle song to create flow in your combos. So um, you don't actually have to do something like an index rollover into a into a helix like nothing you don't have to do anything specifically like that that always works because that's a way to create flow but what you can also do is just create the illusion of flow and that's mainly because you have to remember that people don't see your combos the same way you do because you're the person who did it and stuff like that you always see your combos at a higher resolution than other people do and so if you can uh, kind of step away from your level of seeing the combo you can see the flow that other people are going to see so to get to that lower resolution that other people are going to see your combos in in order to create the flow that people are going to want to see um you have to follow some like general principles that i'm gonna try to define in this video one principle that i think is probably the most important and uh, the one you'll use the most is looping so in power aerials what you can do is loop and that creates like the most basic type of flow so to visualize that or to even get a feel for it if you have a battle song with you which you probably do um if you're watching this video is you do the 180 over and over again so just loop the 180 and you'll feel that flow and you'll feel you'll feel how basic it is too so what you realize is that this is a type of flow it's the most basic and so it, it can it gets kind of boring kind of quick and you know that you have to mix it up to really make your flow more interesting a good way to kind of illustrate this is to think of like uh like mumble rap or something it, like even if you don't listen to rap you've probably heard it before because it's everywhere uh, you got like these really like lazy mumble rap artists who i don't know how they get popular but they do but there's a lot of like with that popularity, you know, you get a lot of criticism. People just do, talking about like, uh, I forget who it was. It was like Snoop Dogg was doing the da 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 da. Like it gets boring. It's the same flow. It gets boring, and it needs to be mixed up. So now I'm going to talk about the principles you need to do that. So there's three different principles that I would say you can use to, like, make your flow more complicated and kind of bring it to life. Uh, and those can be kind of grouped up into the category of interruptions. So the three different interruptions I would say are reversal, an angle change, and then an angle change with a reversal, kind of the combination of both. Now to illustrate each of the three different types of interruptions, a reversal would be like, let's say you do a 180 and then you, you do the throw for another 180 instead of like completing the 180 you interrupt with the opposite hand as the battle song comes in front of you 
then pull it back and then just do a 180 in the opposite direction. That's a reversal. Uh, an angle change would be like doing a 180 and then completing that 180 and then bringing the bell song around into a halo. That's an angle change because instead of going on that same kind of lateral plane, now that you're doing a halo, the bell song is going up instead of across your body. It's kind of going up and over your body. And then the last one is a reversal with an angle change. Um, and so that would be something like, I mean, you could even keep the same two moves. Uh, like let's say you do a 180 and then you do that interruption and instead of going into uh, a 180 in the reverse direction you do a halo in the reverse direction so that's you do a reversal angle change or a reversal and an angle change so if you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your combo you can kind of consider these characterizations of the different interruptions uh, so I would say an angle change is the least harsh option and then a reversal is kind of the moderate option and then a reversal and an angle change is the most harsh and when i say harsh i don't i'm not trying to give it like a negative connotation uh basically what i'm trying to say is if you're going for like a high point of like excitement in your combo that's when you do the reversal and the angle change if you're trying to basically just do something that is like low key and just kind of relaxing you can just do you can even do reversals but you can stick with angle changes too and something that's definitely useful to remember at this point is that you can actually tie in these concepts of um, flow that i've just talked about with some of the different kind of mechanical tricks that i've talked about before in power aerials so for example Let's say you're doing a, uh, a halo that's going to work as a reversal and an angle change. And so you want this part of your combo to be really high energy. You can do one of those variations of the halo that I've talked about that is high energy. Or you could just throw the battle song higher. All right, the last thing that I wanted to talk about uh, conceptually was the idea of using music as a flow aid. Because I think music is a really good guide for creating your flow in your combos. So even, like, you don't actually have to be listening to music. Um, I don't listen to anything when I'm filming my videos for, like, Instagram or whatever. But I usually have something in mind. It's not, like, always the music that's actually in my Instagram post. But I usually have something in my head when I'm making my combos just because it's a great uh, guide for creating your flow. Because that's really what music is all about, is just a flow of, you know, sounds. And I would recommend the type of music that makes you want to get up and move. You know, there's some types of music that, or some songs, like even the, in the same genre and the same band, that you just kind of sit there and listen to. Like, that's really what it's meant for. And there's other music that you just want to get up and headbang, or, I don't know, get up and dance to. It doesn't really matter, but anything that kind of encourages you to move, or you really feel like it's encouraging you to move, for some reason always kind of gels better with battle song flipping, especially power aerials. All right, so just to recap, the different principles that I just talked about to help you with your flow are looping, and then the different types of interruptions, reversal, angle change, and reversal and angle change. And so eventually these will just kind of become like intuitive to you, like you'll just kind of do something and realize uh, no that doesn't work or oh yeah that was really good um, but uh, until you get there uh, so that you can step back and really see how other people are going to perceive your flow these are good things to keep in mind and reference when you're working on your combos so the last recommendation that i'd make for this video is to put these principles to use by doing some practice so just put together some 10 to 15 second combos you could do this freestyling or you could do this uh, actually just kind of consciously tying moves together just be like okay so i want to do a halo into a gunslinger into whatever uh you can so you can do it that way uh just make some 10 to 15 second combos and you could even film yourself and then see how that flow works like see if you catch the the looping and then the reversal changes and see how it looks on camera and just do a couple of those and really like exercise these principles so that's it i hope this new type of video helped i wanted to get a little bit more into the conceptual stuff because you know everybody's making different types of tutorials and all that but there aren't a lot of concept 
videos so that people can kind of get into what they should be thinking about when they're doing their own thing. So I hope this video helps and good luck.